I think it's uh, probably unusual for um, a first-time uh, film director to stand on a stage and say to an audience, let me tell you about my grandchildren. <laughs> it, it's really thrilling to, to bring another movie uh, to Gloucester and to benefit Gloucester stage and to realize that something that seemed like a good idea uh, that Jeff Rishon and I had 35 years ago still seems like a good idea today. I want to, uh, before I forget, I want to mention Heidi Dallin, who uh, has been working with the stage company for 150 years. I mean, <laughs> and, and uh, re really has been um, one of the reasons, one of the really good reasons the stage companies still cooking. <laughs> one of our hostesses tonight is one of the great actresses of New England, if not the United States, if not the world, uh, Nancy Carroll, and I think she should be right here. And, and I also want to uh, call attention to Eric Engel because I, I did that job for 28 years, and the big, the big, most, most things that happen in this world happen on the shoulders of the energy of somebody. Usually, it's one person who's crazy enough to just keep going. And I, there was a great fear that I had that when I stopped, the theater would, would not continue. And not only has this guy filled my shoes, he's filled my socks, and the theater is. <laughs> and Eric, uh, God bless you. Thank you. So my, my Old Lady was a play, and it was uh, done in New York in 2002 with uh, Sean Phillips. And um, it was actually the first performance of My Old Lady was not at Gloucester Stage, was not in English. It was in Darmstadt, Germany. In German, I had a crazy German agent who read the script, and he got the thing on at the National Theater in Darmstadt. We never saw it, and he said it was really good. They kind of <laughs> liked it. And then uh, the late, great um, David Wheeler did a uh, first production here in Gloucester, and then Eric did a revival a couple of years ago. And the thing's been done, it's been a really wonderful play for me because it's been done all over the world. And uh, it's taken, uh, Jill and I went to Prague to see the play. It ran in Paris for in a 1,200-seat theater for God knows how long. A couple of years back, a good couple of years back, um, I got a call saying that the play was going to go into the repertory of the Moscow Art Theater. Well, for an American playwright to be invited to have his or her work at the Moscow Art Theater is sort of like you have a call from St. Peter and he says, there's a place waiting for you when you're ready. And, and uh, off we went to Moscow. I shouldn't really tell this story publicly, but you know, you won't tell anybody. And so I, I, the, the theater of Chekhov and Stanislavski, and oh my God, I was so excited. And the, the younger actors uh, in, in the production were really good, but the old lady who played Mathilde uh, probably had, you know, she was probably a fabulous Russian star who had a 75-year career that was just uh, knock your socks off. But I missed all of that. And so we were sitting there, and I, I saw this quite old lady who looked very much like Elvis Presley at the end of his life. <laughs> and for some reason, that had nothing to do with my play. She changed her costume every five minutes, came out in another gown. And I don't speak a word of Russian. I, no, I do. Prushchai. I can't remember what it means, but I learned that from a <laughs> Theodore Bakel song when I was a kid. Anyway, I started to daydream, and I started to... to Daydream Kevin Klein's character walking in the streets of Paris. And I, I really started to remember why I wrote the play to begin with. I wanted to write a kind of Valentine to France, a kind of thank you. I've had more than 50 of my plays translated and performed there. And it's by, you know, I, I say, uh, people ask me, how did that happen? And I say, in an earlier life, I was a snail adored by the French. I have no idea why it happened. <laughs> But I will do nothing to change it, and and uh, so I wanted to write a play that, you know, was had uh, 
some love for, for France. And of course, I ended up writing this play that uh, I always think I know where a play is going to take me and midway through the writing I say, isn't it interesting where this play uh, has taken me? But I looked at the play in Moscow, kind of daydreaming, and I thought, well, wait a minute, there's no Paris in this play. There's just three actors and three people in a room talking about it. And I started to imagine Paris as a fourth character in the play. And by the end of the evening, I knew I was going to do a movie uh, of my old lady and really make uh, Paris a character. And um, I went to my daughter, Rachel, and if you read the New York Times interview, uh, her narrative is, mine is that I asked her if she would produce the the movie my daughter produced about Schmidt and uh, uh, Great Gardens and, and Moneyball. She's the real deal. And, and so anyway, in the Times interview, I said that I asked her if she'd produce the movie. In the Times interview, she said, I didn't ask her. I told her she was producing the movie. <laughs> but that's like a family thing. And, and uh, a really fabulous uh, journey uh, began. Kevin Klein was the first actor to say yes. Uh, I gave uh, the, the um, first draft of the screenplay won a prize from Ile de France Film Commission and the Writers Guild. And the prize was six weeks in a 16th century abbey in France. And the, the component of the Ile de France Film Commission is they picked me up every day and took me location scouting for the movie that I won it with the first draft of the, of the script. And when you see the movie, you'll realize that the apartment that the movie is set in, uh, which was found for us by Ile de France Film Commission, is really the main reason that we were able to, to make the movie. I gave the script to Kevin Klein, and, and if I can uh, tell you as quickly as possible this insane story, I went to France. Um, uh, to meet with the Ile de France Film Commission, knowing I was going to, I was going to try to do the movie, and uh, there was an agent producer who asked me if I would have lunch with Isabel Ajani, and I said she isn't exactly the way I see the character, so we'll have lunch with her anyway. And, and so I thought, what am I stupid? Why wouldn't I have lunch with Isabel <laughs> Ajani? So we had lunch on the second floor of uh, the Café du Flore in Paris. And the guy, the producer agent guy, turned to me unexpectedly and he said, who is your dream casting for Matthias, for the, the male lead in the, in the film? And I had never said this out loud to anybody before, and I said, Kevin Klein. When I said Kevin Klein, Kevin Klein himself appeared at the top of the staircase. <laughs> he was going to the men's room. He had no idea that I was up. He waved at me, I waved at him. And he came over to the table. And I said, uh, well, I, I have this movie that I've written that I'd like to give to you. And he said, he's a very polite guy. He said, well, give me the script. I'd love to read it. I'm thinking, he'll never read the script. He's thinking, he'll never send me the script. I got back to New York. I sent him the script. And Kevin, uh, throughout his career, which is quite a lengthy career, has been known as Kevin Decline. <laughs> Within days of giving him the script, um, he said he called me and said yes, and we did readings as this as the script developed uh, at my house with actor friends, and eventually when it I don't tend to like uh, movies that are based on plays. They usually are not quite plays and they're not quite movies. So it was really my goal to to uh, make a movie that was a movie. And when we finally got a script that I thought was movie enough, we sent it, Rachel got it, to Maggie Smith's agent. And within a couple of days, we got a call saying she'd like to do the movie. And I flew to London uh, to meet with her, to have lunch with her. And she was very Maggie Smith and uh, said, would you like to know, I have many, many scripts that were offered to me and I chose yours. Would you like to know why I chose yours? And I knew because she's Maggie Smith that whatever she said was going to hurt my feelings. But <laughs> I'm polite enough to have said, yes, tell me why did you choose? She said, because I don't have to die at the end of your movie time. <laughs> now, I want to tell you that I've done a lot of rewrites, so you have no idea how this movie is going to end. I came back to New York, and I told Kevin what Maggie said.
And he said the second least flattering thing an actor said to a writer-director, he said, do you want to know why I chose to do the movie? I knew he was going to hurt my feelings, but I said, why? And he said, because this could be my last chance to get the girl. <laughs> I'm going to tell one, one more story, and then I'll get off the stage so you can see this thing. And I just, I do want to point out that this, those, a lot of people are sitting on sofas and they're wired. And if anybody falls asleep, you'll, you'll feel like a jolt. It's something we've worked out. I was in Paris uh, some years ago and the Pope came to Paris. And he came to Paris to, to celebrate a Catholic holiday. And French intellectuals, mostly writers, were up in arms and they said, we have a very strict code of separation between church and state and this is wrong that the French government has invited the Pope to celebrate a Catholic holiday. So off they went to the airport with their signs, with their placards protesting as French intellectuals are wont to do. And the Pope arrived uh, at the airport and stepped to the microphone and he was a broken old man, very close to death. And he said something that I will remember for the rest of my life. He said, it's a pleasure to arrive somewhere in this life as an unambitious guest. The signs came down. I directed this movie as an unambitious guest. I was 74 years old when I uh, directed the movie. More than anything, when I decided to do a movie, I wanted to do something that would frighten me. That, that wasn't something I had done before. And I wasn't on my cell phone calling producers for my next job. I wasn't trying to build a hot directing career. More than anything else, I wanted to make the most beautiful movie that I could make. I'm sure I failed. The question is, how badly? I, I hope you enjoy my film. So here we go. <laughs> 